So the modern world ends up having a system to sustain an economy. That's what the modern world is about. And that economy is supposed to sustain the people, and it doesn't. So we're, that's why we've evolved this, this uh, concept that we're calling safe. Uh, we're, calling, we're saying that a greater world would have a system to sustain the people first. This is an example of why we do it with tires. I mean, every country has got this. Uh, probably every country has got this. Look at this. These are people. These are mountains. This exists on our planet. If you came here from another planet, you'd go, you know, why are people cutting down trees? You know, they don't want these things. And look at this, this is even worse. <clears throat> so what goes on is the greenhouse gets very hot inside and we have gravity operated skylights that operate with a rocker arm and just open naturally with gravity. Gravity never wears out. And the hot air that gets pretty hot up there escapes. And when it escapes, it's going to create a vacuum, but it can't. We make tubes going out through the, the burial of the building, coming way out over there. And they are open to the outside if you open the doors to them. And they bring in the fresh air through the earth, which cools it down. The windmills, this is kind of a shot that shows the history of the windmills. You have seen this one uh, from the history, and then this one, and this is like 70, late 70s, middle 80s. This is now, this is the new dinosphere. This thing is beautiful, it's a piece of art, and it's based on the same principles that let this one spin for 22 years without maintenance. I've gone into how these kind are worthless, but we used a lot of them to get experience. And we got one going in New York City, Midtown Manhattan, an Earthship project, where I'll talk a little bit more about this. Uh, we got two of them, one at either end of this structure. We're taking the sun, we got two six-story buildings, and here's our building lot. We're bringing the sun in New York City, hitting an 80-foot long mirror and shooting it down into the Earthship. And, uh, and they're, they're buying it. I mean, they're, the, the council has said, hell, I want one of these. So. So then back to our, our configuration of our typical uh, building where we show everything. Uh, your water, your gutter, your, your big gutter, your silk catch, your cistern, gravity feeding to the home. Uh, that's, that is important. Otherwise you're looking at, at being vulnerable to power always being available and a, a pump always being available. And it's, it's just easy enough to keep your cistern uh, you know, a meter above floor level and have gravity feed so you've always got your water. You take a shower, you go into your uh, filter to filter out the hair and stuff, and then you, uh, it's, it's just a series of tandem cells, uh, any length, whatever, depending on the floor plan of your house. And we make the first ones a little shallower so that the roots of salads don't have to go down as far as the trees and the bougainvilleas and things like that. A lot of little subtleties like that make it so you can make it more inviting for different plants. There's the plastic bottles, the glass bottles, the jungle. You live in a jungle. And it just, you know, I can't, I can't talk about it enough because it's just so many advantages from oxygen to food to eating sewage to filtering air, blah, blah, blah. Now you're talking about the black water system. You flush the toilet with the used water, goes out to a conventional septic tank of sorts, but the black water, we're, we're, taking, we're in the desert, see? So the black water is causing jungles to happen outside in the desert. See, this is, this is our land, it's desert. It's, seven, it's a 2200 meter desert, high desert, super cold, super hot, dry as a bone, rattlesnakes, you know, and this is this guy's yard from his black water. He doesn't water this, he just uses his toilet. And so we will, we've played with solar septic tanks to enhance the anaerobic process, because, but we a lot of times just use typical septic tanks. And this, when people come in here, they come in in the winter, it's frigid cold outside, cold enough to freeze your tongue. And they come in here and it's just like misting rain, 
and you know birds singing it blows people's minds they have religious experiences cucumbers and squash and peppers peppers and here's the hanging buckets that we grow stuff in in addition and it's just it's just a wall of plants just constantly eating sewage uh, strawberries of course uh, these are tomatoes and eggplants and cucumbers everything strawberries broccoli I mean you can't imagine any kind of food that we can't grow we grow citrus we got lemons limes grapefruits um, bananas of course and mushrooms figs uh, artichokes really good artichokes eggplant grapes grapes yeah the grape, grapes are a great one uh, but it's just like when people ask can you grow food and can you grow enough this is all from that same building I mean and and we're I don't live there it's a nightly rental so if I lived there I would even get more intense with it and so I could I can clearly say that four people could live in that big building and not have to go to the store to stay alive.